Hello everyone. Welcome to Basics e-learning. In lesson number 14 video, I am going to discuss what is a system and what are the properties of systems. In my previous videos, I have all explained about the signals and properties of signals. Based on that, I have explained so many problems. So I am leaving a link in the description box for my previous videos. System is an interconnection of operations that transforms an input signal into an output signal. Let us say some system that is represented with H which has one input and some output let us say Y of T. So this is a continuous time system. So Y of T is represented as H of X of T. Or else if you are considering as a discrete time system, then y of n is equal to h of x of n, where x of n is the input and y of n is the output or output we call it as response also. So, if you are taking this y of t output signal, you are taking the input and performing some operations to get the desired output. If you are getting this output y of t then the properties of this y of t are completely different from the input signal properties. These are the sum of the properties of the systems that I am going to discuss in this video. Linearity, time invariance, memory, causality, stability and invertibility. Now let us see the first property linearity. Linearity property is defined like this. A system is said to be linear if it satisfies the property of superposition. That is, if an input consists of weighted sum of several signals, then the output is also the weighted sum of its responses of each of those signals. Let us see how this is. Suppose say I have a system. Okay, I am considering one system H. Okay. For this system, if I give input as x1 of t, corresponding output is y1 of t, let us say. Similarly, if I give x2 of t, consider the output to be y2 of t. So, according to the superposition theorem, the input should consist of weighted sum of several signals. So, now I am taking my input as sum of these two input signals. Two input signals I am considering x1 of t plus x2 of t but they are telling sum of weighted signals that means they are multiplied here by some constant. So suppose say a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t is the whole signal that I am giving as the input to this h system h. For this what they are telling is it has to be a into y1 of t plus b into y2 of t means what the sum of weighted sum of the responses of the individual signals to the system is it correct so a into x1 of t so a for x1 of t the output is y1 of t b for x2 of t the output is y2 of t so if the system satisfies this property that is a into x1 of t plus b into x2 of t if you are giving as input to the system and if you are getting the output as a into y1 of t plus b into y2 of t then we say the system is linear. Next is time invariance property. A time invariant system is one for which a time shift of the input signal should cause a corresponding time shift in your output signal. So, let us consider one system that may be continuous or discrete. If it is continuous, we will represent with x of t and if it is discrete, we will represent with x of n. So, for this signal, I am taking input as x of t. Then, my output will be y of t. So, it is represented as h of x of t is equal to y of t or else simply you can write x of t tends to y of t. Then if you are applying a time shift on this input, there should be a corresponding time shift 
infer in your output. So, x of t minus t naught should give your output as y of t minus t naught. So, I will explain this in a pictorial way. Suppose say this is the signal, some small sinusoidal signal I am considering as my input signal. You are performing some operation on this sinusoidal signal and you are getting a square pulse at your output y of t. Suppose say your input signal is extended from 0 to 2 on your time scale and your output is also from 0 to 2 on your time scale. Suppose I have shifted this signal from 1 to 3 now. Then your output also should be shifted to 1 to 3 without change in the shape of the signal. So this is called your time shift property. The time shift may be advanced or delayed. So that is you can shift the signal towards your left side or to your right side. Then the corresponding shift should appear on your output signal also. Suppose say the, you are taking a discrete time signal then it should be x of n minus n naught should result in y of n minus n naught. If the system is satisfying this property then we call the system is time invariant. Next is memory. A continuous time signal is referred to as memoryless. If the output y of t at every value of t depends only on the input signal x of t at the same value of t. That means suppose your y of t depends only on x of t. That means the t suppose t is taking 0, 1, 2, 3 values. y of 0 depends on x of 0. That is the present value of t. y of 1 takes on x of 1. At t is equal to 0, the present value is 0. So, output depends upon only on the present value. It is not depending upon the previous values. So, that is why it does not have any memory. If it is depending upon the previous values, then I say it has some memory. It is as simple as that. You, If you can remember the past, we can say that the system has some memory. If the system is not depending upon any past, then we say the system is memory less. Now, if it is a discrete time signal also, the same property will hold good. Y of n should depend upon x of n for every value of n at that point of time. Coming to the next property, causality. So, a continuous system is said to be causal if the present value of y of t depends upon the present value of x of n or previous values. That means x of n minus n naught. Suppose say y of 5. Now, it may depend upon x of 5. And what are the previous values? x of 4, x of 3, x of 2. Any of the value if it is depending also, we say the system is causal. So, we know this is the causal system I can say for like this if I am drawing x is equal to 5 means for the previous values also if it is depending upon present or the previous or the past values then we say the system is causal. Similarly, for discrete time signal also it can hold good for y of n and x of n you can write it down. Next is stability property. A system is said to be bounded input, bounded output stable if and only if for every bounded input there should be a bounded output. So, let us see what is this property. Here, I am considering one discrete time system that is for which you have x of n is your input and y of n is your output. So, the same property will hold good for your continuous time system also. Whereas for continuous time system, x of t is your input and y of t is your output. So your output is bounded that is y of n, magnitude of y of n is less than or equal to b y less than infinity. Means for any value of n, your y of n should be in the range of 
this by and infinity that is where this by is some integer positive integer that is it should be less than infinity means for it is bounded then this will be possible only when your input is bounded by this bx so bx and by should be any positive integers so for a bounded input if there is a bounded output then we say the system is stable so we call it as b i b o means bounded input bounded output coming to the last property of these systems invertibility a system is said to be invertible if the input of the system can be recovered from the output or else we can say the system is invertible if distinct inputs leads to distinct outputs so we will see what is this suppose say i have an interconnection of two systems two continuous time systems here i am taking so interconnection of systems means it's a cascade so let us take system 1 and system 2 let us say the input to this system 1 is x of t the processed output from system 1 is y of t which is given to system 2 and again the output here is z of t right so if this z of t is equal to x of t back that is your input then we say system 2 is invertible to system 1 means you are if you are feeding the output to one system to get your input back right so that type of system we call it as invertible for more videos please do like share subscribe to our channel let us know your suggestions and queries in the comment box thank you